maybe we can just start from the beginning. How did you manage to get involved in this film? Well, initially, the first I've only worked with with Jan T H once before, and that was for American Gangster. She came in to see me here uh, at my store, and she wanted to know whether I could make suits styled in the 1970s. And I started laughing at her, at which she cursed profusely. And she said, "Why are you laughing?" I said, well, "I used to wear these things, you know. Sure, I know how to make them." So I, I, I made I don't know about 30, 25 or 30 garments for Denzel during that period. And then nothing from Janty as she traveled the world working with Ridley Scott. And then when it came to doing the Gucci movie, she found that the Gucci themselves could not make the style of suits that she wanted that went back to the 70s and the 80s. And so she called me up again, and because I'm out here, and Adam Driver, uh, his apartment is in Brooklyn, so it's like 20 minutes away from here. And it made it very, very easy. So that's how I got involved. And incidentally, you forgot Jan, one of Janty's was, uh, was um, Gladiator. Gladiator. For which, for which you won an Oscar. In co of course, remiss of me to say. It was, was, it was. Well, I mean, and excited also. I, I had a look on IMDb just now. They've announced Gladiator 2. It's actually signed well, really? up. Um, apparently, Russell Crowe has said that's the first he's heard of it. <laughs> but... He might, he, might, he might be past here. They might need to get somebody else to do that now. But I hope he doesn't hear this. Yeah, I think um, Russell Crowe's had a hard time becoming a gladiator since he died in the first one. So I'm not sure Probably. <laughs> how they'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll look forward to that nonetheless. I'll, I'll, I'll watch the heck out of that. Uh, Leonard, how much did you know about the original Gucci story then? Was this something that was in the playbook for you? I knew nothing of it until Janty called me. And we had several discussions as she was, she was trying to fill in the background. It's very important when you get into a, a, into a period piece, and this is termed a period piece, that you get into the background of the whole thing. So she's describing it to me, how, what the, the character would be like that Adam was going to, to portray, and also for Al Pacino, who he was going to portray, and the styling of the suit. And then she, you know, bit by bit, I learned more about what had actually happened. But I, had, I knew nothing of it beforehand. And did you get the brief from Janty? Was she designing the suits and you making them? How did the process Correct. work? I, I work for her. Mm. Every, time, every time I work uh, do a clothes for a movie, I work for the costume designer. And so I make that very aware of them because sometimes the tailors can kind of get full of themselves. So I always say, well, I've worked with Janty and she remembers and, and we, we have a very frank um, understanding. She knows that I give an opinion but if she tells me it's, it's, it's absolute nonsense, then I'm okay with it because she's the boss. Right. So she tells me what she wants. And then we certainly, when we went through the bunches, I went through my swatches, which you may be able to see some of them behind. I went through them. I directed her where to go into Lon in London so that we could look at the, 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 the fabrics simultaneously before we purchased them for the movie. Okay. Um, so I read somewhere that uh, there was... Zenia was involved and a Savile Row tailor was involved. I was wondering if you were the yeah, Savile Row tailor. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's somewhat of a sore, a sore point. I made 50 or 60 garments for this movie. Right. But in February this year, I was taken very ill. I was out seeing uh, Pacino out in California and I collapsed on the street and ended up in hospital. And there's, there's a the, the little lesson that I'm going to tell you now, that if ever you're going to collapse in the street, do it in Beverly Hills because you really get looked after well. But, <laughs> Janty, I, I called Janty up as soon as I had the, I was able to call. I called her and I said, "Look, Janty, I'm in hospital. Um, it looks like I'm going to be out here for you know, a few days. I know that you're going to, you're, you need to get your production going." And she told me that Zania had been knocking on her door on a weekly basis because they do it for free because they get a mention in the in the movies as as you just did yourself. And I said, "I understand that, but I will. I am on top of this." I've got so much cut, so many suits cut before I left. Everything is underway. I will not let you down. But as a safeguard, she did get a couple of garments made by, um, made by Zania. And I did say to her, there's no way that Zania can, can make for a body like Al Pacino's. I said, you may be able to get some for Adam Driver. So when I saw Adam, I spoke to him about this. And he was actually a little bit put out that... Uh, Zania had got the mention and I just got as a London Savile Row tailor working in New York. And he did tell me that when he's been to some of these premieres, every, any opportunity, he, he drops my name, which I thought was 
was very good. And he also said he believes he only wore one of the Sanya garments in the movie. But when I saw it last week, I actually didn't see one that, that Sanya made, but I might be wrong. Adam Driver comes across so well in interviews. Uh, I mean, I know he's got like a military corp. He was a corporal has, some, yeah. some in the background there. And I think that kind of just shines through in the way he's very respectable, very polite. Um, you know, and very humble in his interviews. So it wouldn't surprise me in the, in the least. To, well, he, you know. he is. He's, he's all the actors I've met. I mean, he's clearly one of the nicest guys yeah. that, that I've come across. And, and so you know, I go to his apartment in Brooklyn. I've been there several times. I've met his wife. I've met his uh, son and his assistant there. You know, and it's just like it's just like we're, as we're talking now that some of the actors you try and have a conversation with you with them. And you're there, just there to be used. And I understand that. I'm actually okay with it. They're there, I'm there to be used, and they're there for me to earn money. So if, if, if that's how they want to be, it's just that why not be polite? Because, you know, civility just doesn't cost anything. Yeah. It's, it's always funny to me how people get surprised at how nice actors are. Like, we just assume them to be, um, you know, complete assholes. And we're like, no, no, this guy's really nice. I'm like, well, he's a human being, and he's got... The world at his feet. Why shouldn't he be nice? But yeah, Lee Schreiber was in this week, and he too oh. was really down to earth and a really nice guy. Yeah. Oh, love me some Lee Schreiber. Defiance, my favourite. Yeah. Is with Daniel Craig. Um, Leonard, I mean, the the suits look imperious in this film, and they they looked like a different suit in each scene. I heard that they weren't repeating any looks from scene to scene with either Lady Gaga or Al Pacino or. Adam Driver. So this must have been a huge, huge commitment for you. Like Lady Gaga, uh, I, I've read, insisted that nothing be repeated. Yeah. And certainly I made it my clothes that neither Al Pacino or Adam Driver needed to repeat any of their garments. And some of the garments I made were, were not even used. So every time there was, a, it was a different, every scene was a different garment, which was great, oh. great for me. I mean, they were all the same style, either double-breasted or single-breasted. We may have uh, varied with a, a patch pocket or a slanted uh, flaps or straight flaps. But basically, they were the same style with a nice flare trousers as well. Amazing. And did you make for Jeremy Irons as well? No. Initially, initially uh, Jeremy's slot was going to be played, or part was going to be played by, by Robert De Niro. Right. But De Niro apparently... Uh, you know, wanted too much money, and so they, they went for Jeremy Irons. And De Niro would have been great because he's in New York City, and I've worked with, with Bob several times. Um, he and I are very, very comfortable together, and I'm thinking, it'd be great, you know, there's more suits in, in somebody that I know, but it never came about. That's a shame. Well, I mean, you've done kind of in the background work for Gucci before. We've had you on to talk about Wolf of Wall Street, and, yes. you know, you kind of worked in the shadow of that some way. I don't know if that's way, the right way of phrasing it. Are you kind of now, is this familiar turf for you now, kind of cutting in the style of Gucci? I can, well, I can actually, when, one of the reasons that they've been coming to me all these years is that I can, if I, I, have, I have no, um, no, no, what's the right word to put it? I, 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 there's no ego involved. My job is to create what they want. And with the skill set that I have, once they give me the style, I can move into that era. And so I can produce what they want, when they want it, and how they want it. And I make it very easy for the costume designers because of that. Some of the, some of the tailors, so I hear, when, when, they, when the costume designers go in, they say, we can do that, we can do this, but they make the same suit that they've been doing for all their customers, which is not what the costume designer requires. So I, I, I cut paper patterns. Once I have a, a, if I made a suit for you, once I have you down on a paper pattern, we can you know, go to town on the styling. It, it really doesn't make any difference. It's just a matter of moving steams around. And how would you characterize the Gucci suit from the 70s? I mean, this film spans like three decades, which I imagine creates its own challenges. Um, but how would you characterize the style of a Gucci suit compared to maybe the house style of one of your own? Certainly the jackets were a little bit longer and the shoulders were a little bit stronger than I personally like. As I said, my job is to provide you know, the, the, the suit that my customer wants, and I need to understand what they want. Some people like a stronger sh shoulder. Some of my clients like a, a really soft shoulder, like a shirt shoulder. I don't like it, and I tell them I don't like it, but it's their suit, that's what I make for them. 
House style, you know, I like a little bit of padding in the shoulders, a little bit of roping. I certainly like shape in the coat. And was there a, a suit that you liked particularly in the film, either making or how it looked on screen when you saw it? Well, there was a double-breasted that I really enjoyed. Uh, I think it was a blue one. What the scene was, I don't know. But the double-breasted, in fact, on, on my Instagram page, there's a, there's a photograph of one of these double-breasted. And the way it's just laying there, it looks really good. I'm frantically going there now, Leonard, to see if I can color this one. You're so great and active on your uh, Instagram channel. Uh, Leonard Logsdale, by the way, people, people uh, I'm sure are already following. As I, I should get into a lot of trouble because I kind of say what I feel. I'm not um, uh, politically correct. And I don't kind of mix, mix, care about mixing some personal stuff with the business stuff. But people say it's a business thing you're going to do it. Well, that's not who I am. If it's just about business, then shame about shame, shame on me. That's why I love having you on, Leonard. I just feel like it's uh, you're so unguarded with what you say, but that makes it all, all the better to talk to you and <laughs> that's listen. That's why I get into trouble sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on I'm on the Instagram now, I do, I, and uh, it's the double-breasted one you made close. There's a great Adam, one in there. Isn't yeah, it? and I think this is the one where Adam Driver confronts. Jared Leto coming out of the car after Jared Leto, who plays one of the Gucci's, he's just yeah. had one of his lines pulled and I think they have that clash in the street. In fact, that's the, one of my favorite lines from the film is where he said, you should never mistake chocolate for shit. <laughs> <laughs> or, or chocolate <laughs> for shit. <laughs> that got a big laugh in the theater just now. Yeah. Um, well, Leonard, thanks so much for, for coming on and talking about the suits. Congratulations, mate. Another, another great notch on your IMDB on the resume. I'm, I'm hoping that your son's keeping that updated for you. Well, he, no, he, my son that worked, did work with me now lives in Bali and is actually, you know, making a, you know, becoming somewhat of a star himself. He has 230 million views on, the, on YouTube, so he's doing very well. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he needs to put this one up there because um, you haven't, caught, you haven't, got, the, you haven't got the badge of honor yet for this one. And look at this. Uh, we just, I've just finished making the clothes for for Stanley Tucci for a movie about the life of Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. So that's, that's being filmed right now. And um, there's uh, another one with Woody Harrelson coming out and uh, Taron Edgerton. Oh, wow, great. He was a very nice guy. That's I, what it's called, I don't know. I sometimes make clothes for movies. I really don't know what they're about. But, <laughs> I love that. It's, 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 it's all fun anyway. And are you more, are you going to their place more, like the, the stars or the talent as you were, rather than them coming into the store? Most, most of the time I go out. I mean, I went out to Los Angeles twice on the, for this movie or three times to see Pacino. Uh, Adam just lives around the corner. But sometimes they, they, they come in here. I've had a number of actors from Tom Hanks to, to Daniel Craig, um, Hugh Jackman have come through the store and Bruce Willis. A number of other, and Stanley Tucci for Julie and Julia, all came through the door. Most of the time you go to them because they're too busy and too important to, to come in and see you. Yeah, I Quite mean, Tom, Tom Hanks was for The Post. The Post, most. yes. Yeah, yeah. I worked with him on another movie and I can't remember what it was, but The Post was, a, was uh, I did one, one before, but that's gone from my mind. They're, they're, frankly, there's been so many. I have trouble, I, I have to look at a list or write down, or sometimes I go through my patterns out the back to see who I've made, oh, I remember this one now. <laughs> you're getting to the stage when you're gonna turn on the telly and go, oh yeah, that's my suit on there. <laughs> right. Sometimes I when, I, when I watch a movie, I see two or three clients that I've made clothes for, not necessarily for that movie, all working together. And my kids get a kick out of it when I say, oh, I've met this guy, I've met that guy. Because they, they, they enjoy it when they know that these people have been in to see me. Well, I, to see them. So, I should have asked you, did, did you have to make a lot of repeats, even if it was a suit that was only going to be used once? Not for this movie. No. When I did White House Down, I made 21 of the same suits for Jamie Flock Fox and 20 of the same suits for Channing Tatum because they were all getting beaten up all the time. And yeah. people say to me, Tom, doesn't it bother you that you're making all these suits and they get beaten up? No, I love it. <laughs> And rip it to pieces, it's wonderful. <laughs> They're paying for each one, so why not? <laughs> That's exactly right. Does any of them make their way back to you? I mean, I think we've had this discussion before where a lot of it just ends up with the production company. They then put it in archives or they get yeah. auctioned off. But 
Um, but the House of Gucci, did any come back to you or did the actors keep them, do you know? Well, no, whether they kept them or not, I don't know. Probably, Pacino did, he loved the blue, uh, one of the blue, blue stripe mohair that I made from. He really loved that. And he said that this one he was going to keep, whether he did or not, I don't know. Driver, I don't know whether he's going to keep them. But he did, when I saw him last week, I was doing some work for him for the, for the premieres. And uh, when, he, when I saw him, he did say, Leonard, I think I'm going to come in and see you for a couple of suits because the stuff that I have don't fit. And, and I got on very well. But we'll see. You know, it's, you know, talk is cheap. It's when they come through the door. Yeah. That's when you know they really mean it. And he's a tall guy, right? So I, I don't think there's going to be much six off the peg. Three, six, four, six, three, six, four, yeah. I mean, he, he towers above Lady Gaga in that film and pretty no, much everyone does. else in, in the present. Yeah. So I can't imagine that he is someone that needs something bespoke. I was fly- I, 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 she didn't know this. I was flying out to see somebody. I think I was going to see Jim Carrey for a movie, and they flew me first class out to LA. And there was this woman across the, the aisle, and I'm thinking, boy, I'm sure she looks familiar. The staff were making a lot of fuss, and on the, on the way out, I was chatting to her, and, and, you know, and you know, not not for very long. So after she got off the plane, I let her go first, being a gentleman. I, I whispered to the cabin, like, who's that? I said, that's Lady Gaga. I said, well, <laughs> I could say that I met her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have said, oh, well, we have a connection somewhere down the road. But yeah. <laughs> that's not the right. first time that's happened either. Well, she was great. I, I think she, she was very she, good. She's, she's a great actress. I mean, she's, uh, she, in this, she's a real movie star. I mean, she's kind of a, a star anyway in, in the world of celebrities. But I think she, she is a real movie star now. Well, most, 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 of the, most of the press that I've read about the movie they concentrate on Lady Gaga more than they do than anybody else, which I, I guess I understand that. I think it's because she is delivering the most intensity. I mean, Adam Driver is delivering a very different performance, and I know we're kind of yes. going off the style here, but he's doing something which is very restrained. I mean, he's Correct. doing a lot just by being And he restrained. did a good job at that, too. And it kind of allows room for Lady Gaga to be this loud over here and Jared yeah. Leto being very loud over there. Yeah. But it's, yeah, no, it's a real vehicle for her. So, uh, intense is a great word. She is an intense actor. She gets right into the, into the part, which is, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I heard she was in, in character for like a year and a half doing the accent. <laughs> which, yeah. Well, they, they, they learned, but when, when um, Frank Langella Jella did the movie of Frost Nixon, I made his clothes for the, for the movie and for the Broadway show. Um, I was reading that when he was on the set, he only responded to being called Mr. President because oh. he gets right in. When he comes up here to start a movie, he starts with the socks and the underwear and builds the character up. He really, he really gets into it. And one time when, he, when I went to the, the rehearsal for the play and he was trying everything on and he had his shirt and he had his wig and everything else, they said, well, let me take a photograph of you, Frank. And as he was walking across, he changed, he changed his, his, his way of walking and when he turned around, if I hadn't seen him walk across, I would not have recognized him as Franklin Joe. He gets so much into character. He's a great actor. Oh, Frost Nixon is one of my favorites. Yeah. I love he was, the heck he, out he of that. He's very good. And, the play and was I, excellent too. Oh, I never got to see the play. Um, yeah. Uh, that, there's an exchange, I think, mean, halfway through the film where he tries to catch Frost off guard. Um, just before the cameras roll, and they're having a very kind of light-hearted conversation, and then then he just said something like, "Oh, did you masturbate last night?" And then he goes, yes. "And action!" And then like Frost is like, "Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> brilliant! I should That's try that." Just throw, just throw them off. Yeah. I, would, I had a really, I want, I'm not going to mention this guy's name, but he's he's extremely famous, and he's a businessman. And I used to see him in his apartment on Fifth Avenue, and he wore no underwear. And you know, there's a few like that. Uh, and so he called me up one day, he says, do you have the, the trousers ready for me? Can you come up at one o'clock and try it and, and so I can have a fitting? So I said, sure. So I went into his, off, into his apartment park and there was a British banker there with his, with his gray pinstripe suit and he's sort of walking around and, and talking this, that and the other. And so uh, this fellow said to him, do you mind if I just try these pants on? I really got to get them finished. So of course he took his trousers off and there was nothing there. The banker went to pieces, and I'm thinking, well, he just, he just won his point there. <laughs> Amazing. Well, it's like he was expecting you. But, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's quite an exchange. <laughs> Leonard, thanks so much for taking time out. Um, 
you're, uh, you're in New York. Everyone knows where you are, leonardlogsdale.com. Um, whereabouts can people find you in New York when they want to pop by? 9, 9 East 53 between Madison and 5th. And what's it looking like now for schedule-wise? Can people catch you before Christmas? or are you? Oh, yeah, I'm in every day before Christmas. I'm coming in because I have appointments booked between Christmas and New Year's as well. I've actually, because of the movie, I've got I've had somebody in from Singapore this week. I've got somebody coming in from London just uh, just between Christmas and New Year to come and see me. But, but they, they heard that I made the clothes for the movie. So all of a sudden, oh, I mean, that's if I make fantastic. A suit for you, probably people say, eh. but if you make a suit for, for Al Pacino, all of a sudden it, it, people take notice. Oh, amazing. Well, I hope that they're going to try and get something in the similar style that they've seen on the screen, right? Well, there, there's a couple. One guy wants the gray, gray check suit that uh, um, Adam got shot in. He's already told me what he wants, so I'm going to get the fabric. I'm actually going to buy it in. If he, if he, if he doesn't come in, I'll be able to sell it, but I, I just need to get hold of it so that when he gets here, I can just start with the suit. Interesting. So can you get the fabrics for the other suits? Do you have them to hand in the yeah. shop? I haven't got them to hand, but I have the, I have the numbers. A couple of them are already sold out. Some right. of them, well, most of them, I think I could probably get. Janty sent a lot of fabric to me. She found a place in Italy where she bought them at a very, very good price, shipped them all out. And we actually went through those as well. That's fascinating. And when they sell out, that's it? They don't really... Most of the time, once, once it's sold out, somehow, if it's a bread and butter suit, like a blue stripe I'm wearing now, or solid gray or sorry blue, they'll keep repeating them. But when it's a, it's a, a kind of a fashion design, I, I like the, the tan suit with the white stripe that um, Pacino wore, you know, that's something, once it's sold out, they won't repeat it because it's not as what we term a bread and butter design. It's, right. it's something that's, that's, that's fickle to people. That's fascinating. Oh, well, listen, um, I do hope if customers or clients come in and ask for Thank some you. of those screen accurate ones that you'll, you'll get to post those because I'd love to see them. Uh, in the meantime, Leonard, again, thanks for jumping on leonardlogsdale.com and obviously Leonard Logsdale on Instagram where people can have fun and watch you in the makings of these suits as well. I always like the behind the scenes stuff that you do there. So. Thank you. All right, great. I'll let you go. Thanks, Leonard. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.